Well, thank you for that kind introduction, Laura. Um, appreciate the opportunity to come speak with you today. Um, again, my name is Paul Pugliese. I'm the County Extension Coordinator in Bartow County. I've uh, been a county agent now for about 14 years. Um, unfortunately, we, we do find ourselves at war today uh, with an invisible enemy. Um, and and COVID-19 is definitely one of those that's a devastating enemy at that. Um, our biggest enemy probably, in my opinion, is the fear of COVID-19 itself. Our primary defense against this enemy is physical isolation, and many people fear isolation. Fear is what makes the stock market take a nosedive and makes people panic shop and hoard food. Fear is what causes people to become anxious or depressed. And our job as county extension agents is to reassure people and give them comfort that our farmers are still going to work every day. I even talked to a few of them yesterday in my county. Many Americans today have never met a farmer, much less comprehend where their food comes from. Gardening is a way to help make those connections with our food more tangible. Technically, there aren't any food shortages in the United States. Folks that have lost their jobs may be legitimately food insecure. However, perceived food insecurity among those that are financially stable is at an all-time high. Gardening gets people outside, which has many benefits besides growing food. Gardening can have a therapeutic effect on people that have undergone physical and mental trauma. The act of nurturing a garden can provide people with a way to work through difficult issues, reduce stress, and heal their wounds. Plants affect the level of compassion and empathy that people feel towards others, and numerous studies have shown that people who spend time around plants are more likely to help others and have improved relationships. People who spend time outside in nature have a more positive outlook on life than those people who spend a great deal of time indoors or looking at screens all day. The reality is that most people are not going to go out and you know, start a half acre vegetable garden probably, um, at least not big enough to truly impact their food insecurity. A small garden can supplement access to nutritious vegetables and help improve health and wellness by being outdoors and getting some exercise. However, gardening can definitely improve one's perception of food security and perhaps overall happiness. Nathaniel Hawthorne once famously said, happiness is a butterfly, which when pursued is always just beyond your grasp, but which if you sit down quietly may alight upon you. Perhaps we all need to get outside more and leave our phones on silent. Next slide, please. I have a five-year-old boy at home and we like to get him out in the garden. I'm a firm believer that anybody that has a child should either have a garden at home for that kid to get a good gardening experience or help start a school garden or a community garden. It's a great experience for kids to learn about science, technology, engineering, and math, all those STEM sciences that are important to developing that young person. Of course, gardening doesn't have to be about only growing food. Even container gardens with flowers can provide a great experience for observing butterflies, hummingbirds, and other pollinators. You don't have to have a big backyard for containers. Honestly, the most excitement our family has had this week is watching a bluebird tend to our nest of three eggs in our birdhouse. Every year, my son and I go on a scavenger hunt in our backyard to create a flower arrangement for Mother's Day. This bouquet of ferns, roses, Japanese maples, uh, Henry's garnet, abelia, and climbing hydrangea is what we created for my wife last year. Of course, we also have a big vegetable garden and freeze enough sweet corn uh, to last us a year in our home. By the way, we did have corn for dinner last night. My boy loves to eat his vegetables, the emphasis being his vegetables. Next slide, please. So um, some of the reasons that I like to garden, um, it's nice to have access to that, that fresh right out of the garden taste. Um, you know, we keep it locally grown, kind of reduce our, our carbon footprint, if you will. Um, it's a good fulfilling hobby uh, that I encourage a lot of folks to do. It's good exercise. Um, we do put up a lot of our own food as far as canning and, and freezing, and so we can have more control over the amount of salt, and sugar, and preservatives that are in our food. My wife just happens to be a, a registered dietitian, which uh, also helps with uh, canning and, and food preservation. Um, so we don't starve in our house. We definitely eat well, um, and we enjoy what comes out of our garden every year. Uh, there's a picture of my boy holding up uh, some clover in our garden. Uh, we always plant a cover crop out there every year uh, with some um, crimson clover. And um, that's on St. Patrick's Day of this year. Next slide, please. So probably the most important thing is if you're going to start a garden, um, to think about the site. Um, you got to have at least six to eight hours of sunlight minimum uh, for any vegetables that you might want to grow. 
Uh, you definitely want to avoid any trees or hedges, especially where there might be shade at certain parts of the day. Um, even tree roots can be a major problem as far as competition in that garden. Um, you also want a site that has, you know, good, well-drained soil, um, you know, a finely textured, medium textured soil is ideal. Um, if you don't have that kind of soil, not many of us have a perfect loam in our backyard, um, you can add compost. Whether it's a sandy soil or a clay soil, compost is going to help improve that soil texture dramatically. Consider also the location of that garden as far as convenience to your house and water. Um, if you don't have access to water nearby, um, a well at least, um, you know, it's going to be very hard to keep that garden alive, especially in a drought situation. Also consider protection from pets and other wildlife because um, deer, raccoons can ravage a garden and I can speak firsthand uh, with that from experience. Um, in fact, we've got ourselves a, do a dog this year to keep the deer out of our garden. Next slide, please. So, you know, as a first timer, um, if you're looking at starting a vegetable garden at home, you might want to start with a raised bed garden. It's a lot easier, it's a smaller space that you can easily tackle and it's going to be a space that's easier for young people to be able to work in that area as well. One of the things you want to consider is the size of the bed. Make sure you're not any wider than three or four feet wide so they can easily reach over the bed without having to walk in it. That's the whole point of a raised bed garden is to not have to walk in it and not have to compact that soil. To build your garden, you have to make, you can make it out of uh, boards, pallets, concrete blocks. Um, there's a lot of different materials you can use. Pallets work great for shallow rooted crops such as uh, cool season vegetables, lettuce, spinach, kale, Swiss chard, even baby carrots. Um, that's a picture of my son holding his favorite vegetable, which happens to be carrots. We ate some uh, of those yesterday, too. You should uh, staple landscape fabric to the bottom of the pallet uh, to hold the soil and plant rows uh, in between those slats if you decide to use pallets. Um, we've used those at several local schools in Barker County and they're becoming quite popular. I've also found that concrete blocks are one of the cheapest, most durable, and easiest things you could use to make a raised bed garden. They're about eight inches deep, which is just about right for, for many crops. You can even fill the holes with topsoil and plant in the holes too. So again, make it a fun experience and make it something that's manageable for your, your backyard garden. Uh, next slide, please. Probably the most important thing when you're working with kids is to make sure you, you have kid size appropriate tools. That means making sure you invest in gloves, tools, and things that they can actually use in the garden. Whether it's pulling weeds, watering the plants, there are even small water buckets that are appropriate for kids that they can pick up all kinds of things that they can do in the garden. Sometimes the plastic tools that you use in a sandbox might work, but they actually have real tools that work even better and last a little longer and a kid's a kid uh, size as well. So consider investing in those nicer tools, especially if you're going to continue to garden for many years. Uh, there are lots of good options at most hardware stores and local feeds and seed stores and will carry those tools you can use for your children to keep them occupied. Again, try to make it fun. Make sure your kids get a wheelbarrow, maybe a toy lawnmower, so that they can feel that they're involved with that gardening experience. That's so important to keep them involved throughout the year. Something else to really encourage young people is to make sure you buy books and read to them every night um, and teach them about gardening. They're going to learn a lot with those stories during story time. There are a lot of good books out there, everything from Diary of a Worm, which is one of my favorite ones about composting, The Secret of the Apple Tree, even Dr. Seuss and Curious George have books on gardening that you can use with your kids. There are all kinds of age-appropriate books about gardening, so make sure you invest in those for your children. The last thing, probably the most important thing, is that those kids actually get to taste their hard work. They get to harvest it out of the garden and enjoy it on their plate. That's something I would encourage you to do, to encourage kids to eat more vegetables, which is not a bad thing. We probably all need to eat more vegetables at the end of the day anyway. Get them involved with growing them, cooking them, even preserving them and canning them. All the way farm to table is part of that experience as well. Next slide, please. So uh, for more information and gardening tips, you can check out my UGA blog site, Growing and Mowing in Bartow County. Uh, feel free to scrub, uh, subscribe to my blog newsletter or share with any friends or clients that might be interested. And remember that UGA Extension has many publications online about home gardening, school gardens, and community gardens to help get you started.